Uh, what's up everyone today's monday today's youtube live day so uh yeah market is starting to heat up so let me kind of explain what is causing the market to heat up let me kind of explain the november uh thesis that we have and then we'll talk about today's trades on the day so first things first is last week we had a big surprise in the cpi numbers the cpi is what measures the inflation right so cpi is a consumer price index and the last, I don't know, like six times the inflation numbers came out, they were really, really bad numbers and the market just collapsed. So, you know, the market gets used to kind of selling off on these CPI numbers because no one really has faith in what the Federal Reserve is doing with raising interest rates. So this past week, we got a very low CPI number, which shocked the markets and set everything straight up and had a continuation move on Friday, the day after that. So today we woke up. And today we had a lot of small cap runners. And I'm not saying these 100, 200, 300%, but I'm saying four, five, six stocks are moving. You know, we got used to maybe one stock moving. We got used to two stocks moving. But now today we woke up, there's like six, seven, eight stocks moving, right? So why did that happen? What is the reason for it happening? And what can we expect going forward for the rest of the month or the rest of the year? So number one is we trade small cap stocks. We trade stocks that people buy because they hope that it's a lottery ticket and it's gonna make them rich. 99% of the time, you're not gonna win the lottery and 99% of the time, these stocks are not gonna go up. Yes, there's often times that they squeeze higher. Yes, there's times that they kind of go crazy, but 90% of the time, they kind of come back down to reality because a lot of people like to gamble on our small cap stocks. And the reason why people haven't been gambling on the small cap stocks. The reason why the small cap stock market has been slow for the past year is because everyone pretty much lost their ass in the overall markets. Whether you're an investor, whether you're a long-term holder, whether you're a swing trader, if you were buying something, it's probably down 50 to 70% at minimum, sometimes even more. So because people don't have money in their accounts, because people are you know, kind of struggling, because we're in a recession, because we're in a possible depression, you know, people aren't really buying as much lottery tickets anymore. They're not gambling on these stocks. They're not speculating on these stocks. And because they're not doing that, you know, a lot of these stocks are dying. So insert the CPI numbers from last week, giving an overall jolt into the market, which once again, gets people excited, which brings in speculation money, which brings in gamblers, which brings in everyone into our small cap stocks. And that is what caused the small cap stocks to start to rebound because now that the overall market is rebounding, people are more willing to speculate on small cap stocks being next. Okay, keep that in mind. Now we've talked about this in the past three, four, five different videos about November zombie month. And November is historically the month that we get the most amount of runners. We get the most amount of runners in November because historically that is when a lot of these hedge funds pump up these small cap stocks so that they could kind of cook their books until the end of the year, right? So November, usually around Thanksgiving week, is the busiest time for our small cap stocks because that's when the zombie month is. That's when all these hedge funds are kind of manipulating these stocks. So we have a combination of a great CPI number giving confidence into the market. We have November zombie month giving confidence into the market. So in my opinion, probably from now until the uh, end of the year, we should probably have some good small cap runners. We should probably have some good large cap stocks. And I think at least short term, uh, the action st should start picking up because now people are more willing to speculate. People are more willing to gamble on these small cap stocks. And as you know, we don't gamble. We trade with a strategy. We trade with an edge. And you know we like to do things our way. So that's the first step of kind of where we're at in the market right now. And I'm recording this. It's November 14, 2022. So pretty much got about, I don't know, six weeks left until the end of the year, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I think at least for short term, uh, so long as the next CPI report doesn't come out horrendously wrong, uh, we should have a lot of great action. And that next report is not going to come out for a month. So at least we probably have about four weeks of action, which is great because now this is the time to make, you know, your year in the next couple of weeks, in the next couple of months. So this is the most important time to be trading right now, but it's also the most dangerous time because a lot of stocks are going to be going crazy. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about my trades for today. So today's trades were kind of choppy. Um, I kind of screwed up here. There was a lot of stocks that were moving pre-market, but they didn't really end up doing what I, you know, wanted them to. The main stock was this ASTS. So ASTS just cratered at the open. 
it went from $10 to $8 at the open. And I'm like, God damn it, bro, like shit. I screwed up, like I didn't take a trade, but I remind myself that as a short seller, we want to see stocks break down. We want to see stocks tank because on that bounce, it bounced from $8 to, you know, 940. I took a short on that bounce. I got out around, you know, 890. And as I'm recording this, it's at 850. So I screwed up, man. I screwed up. So today's lesson on that stock was if you missed it, it's totally okay because oftentimes they're going to bounce and that bounce is going to be your entry. So don't feel FOMO. Don't feel discouraged that if you're looking at a stock and it just collapses at the open that you're not going to have an opportunity. Oftentimes these stocks bounce at least one time and now one bounce is all you need. So that was my first trade. I kind of screwed that up because I had a great entry, but my exits were very weak. My exits were very poor. I had no reason to cover. I had no reason to exit, but I just got a little bit emotional and said, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to take the money and run. The next stock on the day was this ENSC. So ENSC was a very similar scenario. It was a stock that tanked pre-market, tanked at the open around 220. And then my plan was to short, I think it was uh, 240, 250, 260. And we got pretty much that. I went to 240, 250, 260, and it was kind of hovering around 240. And basically my thought process was, it's probably gonna have one stuff and come back down. Kind of came back down to 220. I took my money and ran, and now that's, you know, kind of still chopping at 220. So overall, it was a little bit of a choppy day. The one stock that I was uh, not patient on ended up fading. One stock that I took the money ended up doing nothing. So overall today, you know, I couldn't really get any shorts out of the open. I had to wait for these stocks to tank and then bounce. So just reminding myself on days like today where, you know, I felt discouraged at the open. I felt like, God damn it, I missed everything is I didn't really miss everything. Sure, I missed the first trade, but there's not only one trade on the day. So I'm trying to remind myself that all I got to do is wait for the bounce, short the bounce, and that's how I'm going to make money. So what am I going to do to adapt and improve in this November zombie month is I've been saying it for a long, long time. I want to adapt. I want to adapt. I want to adapt. So I'm going to try more often to go long day one stocks during November, during zombie month, because the action's picking up. We're starting to see stocks moving a little bit more. So I feel a little bit more comfortable stepping out of my comfort zone and starting to buy these stocks because I think that the market has been dominated by shorts all year. I think a lot of shorts have gotten very aggressive. I think a lot of shorts are trading a little bit too aggressively. So while the market cycle is slowly starting to change, we can see a change with more runners. We can see it with the large cap stocks holding as we're seeing the market cycle change and favor longs. I want to be able to adapt and buy more stocks on the long side. So that's what I'm gonna try to do, whether it be buying pre-market, whether it be buying a zombie times, but I'm gonna be trying at least for this month to try to buy more stocks. And I'm okay losing money doing this. I'm okay doing that because I want to be able to test, adapt, improve, and change with the cycles. A big problem or a big epiphany I had, a big realization I had after the 2020, 2021 stock market COVID boom was all you had to do was close your eyes and buy stocks and they would just go straight up and you would make a lot of money. Whereas, yeah, shorting was very lucrative. Shorting, you still made a lot of money, but I missed out on probably millions of dollars of extra money not buying these stocks on day one, not buying these stocks at zombie time. So when the cycle changes, when the environment changes, I'm not going to make that same mistake again. I'm going to start to buy stocks on day one and focus on shorting stocks on day two. That's going to be my thesis so long as the market conditions permit it. So it's okay to adapt. It's okay to improve. It's okay to change. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. So do you guys have any questions before I move on? Start just looking around to see what stocks are zombieing. PDSB is zombieing. It's no surprise. It's easy to borrow stock. Any questions, guys? Alex, when you have multiple outer lines, how do you manage your trade size? So I kind of just break it up into the same thing. So if I want to short like 3,000 shares and I have three lines, I do 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. I keep it very simple, guys. 
Um, I keep it very simple because I don't want to overcomplicate this stuff. But yeah, so what have you guys been struggling with in this market? Because I guarantee that the same things that you struggle with is what thousands of other people that are viewing this video are struggling with, what tons of people want to learn about, what tons of people are kind of interested in. So a big thing that I've been seeing is a lot of people have been oversizing. A lot of people have been using more size to compensate for lack of setups, and that's not the way to do it. Oftentimes, less size is more. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, in the meantime, I'm still recording my live trades. I'm still pumping out examples for the lifetime members. Uh, lifetime members so far are loving the examples. It just takes a really long time to get it done. But yeah, what's the best time to get first dibs on locates in the morning? As early as possible. The earlier you get it, the cheaper it's going to be. There was times where I would wake up at 4 a.m., get a locate, and go back to bed. Can you explain your plan with DWAC on the sell the new setup? What would you like it to? Okay, that's a great question. So what's DWAC doing right now? DWAC is kind of going down right now, but I'm monitoring DWAC for a sell the new setup tomorrow. So I'm monitoring for a sell the new setup because apparently Donald Trump is going to announce his campaign for the presidency on True Social tomorrow. So the stock has been running up, running up, running up in anticipation of that news release coming out. And ideally, what I want to see is after Donald Trump announces his presidency, I want to see if volume is going to come in. I want to see if people are going to start selling it, if smart money is going to exit it. And if they do that, I'm just going to piggyback the trend. So please remind me tomorrow, potential sell the new setup on DWAC. And who knows, maybe it'll go under $20 tomorrow. But it doesn't mean just short it when the market opens. You have to wait for that catalyst to end, which is Trump announcing, which we don't know what time he's going to announce. So it could be at any point, at any time of the day, he can announce. And then ideally, that's what the setup is going to be. Who knows? Maybe he's going to come on and say, I'm going to use Truth Social for my entire campaign. Then it's going to keep going up. But, you know, so long as the trend is telling us that the stock is going to start to go down, then that's what we're going to do. So any more questions, guys? I was asking this uh, to MIC members, and I want to kind of ask it to you too, is what more do you guys want to see from us, right? So a lot of people always said we want to see more live trades. So I'm doing more live trades. What is the next thing that you guys want to see more of? What, what can we do to improve the experience at MIC even more? Because the main thing was live trades that everyone wanted. Now we have live trades. I want to know what else we're missing, what else we could do to improve to provide the best content, the best value for members, non-members, everyone. How do you manage your emotions when your planned trade gets missed? Yeah, that's a tough one, guys, because I just get really mad. You know, I just hit my fucking hand on the desk. But uh, the reality is that emotion is temporary. So long as you just, you know, get up, take a five minute walk, you're going to forget about it. So oftentimes what people do is they miss a trade. They start forcing trades on other stocks is remember, before you get into a trade, you should talk to your trading accountability buddy. You should be talking to your group of traders around you to make sure and get a second look and second eye at, you know, some of these trades. There was, when Bao and I first started trading, you know, there was three examples. There was a stock that Alex liked that Bao didn't like. There was a stock that Bao liked that Alex didn't like. There was a stock that Alex liked. There was a stock that Bao liked. And that was the stock that we knew had an edge. So I would highly, highly suggest that you guys talk to your trading partners, talk to your trading accountability buddies, share ideas share ideas in the room, share ideas privately. And if you guys both agree on it with the same thesis, the same thought process, the same everything, chances are that's probably going to be a good trade. And if you guys haven't already subscribed to the channel, guys, subscribe to the channel, leave a like. We're trying to do our best to grow the channel. But the truth is that our content is pretty educational. There's no hot girls. There's no sexy cars. There's no this, there's no that. So we keep it very clean, very legit. And you know, who knows, maybe we might start to show off the stuff that we have, but the reality is we're traders, man. We're sitting at home trading all day long. I'm in my sweatpants. Just, you know, this is, this is who we are, right? This is what we do. So yeah. Tomorrow, Bao's going to be coming on Instagram live and we're going to be having an announcement for a new junior mod. So tune in tomorrow for Bao's Instagram Live. But aside from that, guys, aside from that, it's Monday, busy day. I think I'm going to go back to the room. I'm going to help some members. And if you guys have any additional questions, I'm the guy that replies to the comments. So leave a question in the comment, and I'll come and I'll answer. But in the meantime, 
get ready because November zombie month is here. The action is here and there's plenty of time, plenty of room to capitalize. So thanks guys and I will see you back in the room.